2021 league winning dynasty players in your league that and more this week on the football guys dynasty show and jordan i have a feeling we're going to talk about some running backs this week as we talk about the changing landscape but we also talk about players that maybe they have produced before but all it counts is in the money weeks and here we are upon us it's madison season alexander madison season um yeah i mean listen i was the uh, I, I was scared about the the cook injury. It looked weird when he got hurt. I thought it was actually I thought he actually hurt his leg the way he was all like the way he reacted. Um, so and he has the history of shoulder injuries and stuff. So we hope he's you know on the mend. I have him in a couple of spots, I and mean, he's a contributor for me. So we'll see there. But um, I, you know f- for the shares of Madison that we've been holding, I, here's another opportunity to get maybe one or two or maybe more spot starts. Um, so well, I think it's well really with injuries. Concerning. We've seen this before, right? They go to IR. They they could go to IR after further evaluation, or maybe they give it a week and they say, "Hey, doc, how far along are we in the recovery process?" And they go, "Eh, we thought it was two games. It's looking more like three or four. Let's just put them on IR." And and we've seen that with multiple players this year. Don't put that out of the spectrum of possibilities. Assuming you have Madison for maybe two games, and then the playoffs start and he's back on ice, that is not you know that is not the only outcome here. So with Madison, like I said, it's awkward. He's had issues with his shoulder before, and we're going to take it one week at a time as we do with every single one of these running back situations. That's non IR. We did that with the Browns. You know, the Browns had some twists and turns there and Madison is going to be another. We've had two, is it two or three spot starts so far? Um, but, yeah. but we're count and counting is the point. And, and he's a guy that we say we're playing every week in and of itself. And so now we have Madison and I'll tell you, there's some leagues where I can absolutely use him. We've said before, you probably in accessibility, you probably have more shares of the backup than you do the starter in most of the depth chart cases. Yeah. I mean, Chuba Hubbard's another example too, right? And I mean, this is, uh, it, I, I, we should talk about McCaffrey as well as, as sort of a fallout from this, but I, um, I mean, Chuba Hubbard was a top, was a running back, two in his early stretch you know in weeks four through nine when he was when he was playing uh so or yeah and four through it was actually he was four through eight so it was yeah he was an, on the uh running back two spectrum for sure so um i think i think he's an interesting one and again we're, we're counting we've talked about this too we're counting um you know it doesn't necessarily have to be from now till uh till week seven to end of week 17 really at this point you're trying to count weeks right you're trying to count you know this madison one is one right so if you're trying to fill in a flex spot like this is this is one and then you know maybe next week it's madison again or maybe the week after it's not madison you know and it's uh, you know uh and you're sort of rotating through you might not know who your week 15 starter is going to be you know right, i'm in a number 15. of situations where i don't know what what it's going to be but i'm sort of i've got options at this point by 15 second Mark may be humming along like we saw for a couple of games early in the season. So somebody you might not have now, you may have later. Um, so there's, and, and that's why it feels uncomfortable if you're not familiar with this, but you need to just be okay with it. And very seldom do you actually get squeezed where you're like, oh, this is a suboptimal <laughs> Alex Co- Collins type situation for my running back too. And I need as many flexes of the non-running back variety as possible this week. I'll tell you, across 40 leagues for me, I may have had for four total leagues across all my leagues like that. It's like, I'm starting a back running back. Like, that's just what I got. I'm going to take the best shot I can. That was maybe starting someone like James Conner, and that was when uh, Chase Edmonds was healthy. Those types of situations or starting, we've been in situations, you know, Javante Williams of someone that's on the, maybe the wrong side of a 50 50 committee situation. You're like, let's hope, you know, he's probably going to give me eight to 10, something like that. But the perfect storm could happen, whether or not it does, but that's just what you're going to do that week. But I would just say the aggregate value of doing this later in the season, it provides big dividends because you probably have more leagues than not where you're starting three, four strong if you can't. Yeah, yeah, and I just flipped over to the our projections. Nice solid running back three projection this week for for Alexander Madison. Like these last his last start was w- the same thing. It was oh, he was a home favorite against Detroit. This one's a road favorite against Detroit. Like we'll take all the Detroit matchups we can get. Alexander Madison just 
give us those as we sort of go down the stretch here. I mean, you know, I've got him in a couple of spots. Like I've got the, you know, I've got him in Scott Fishbowl, right? And I've just sat on him. You know, I started him once and I'm going to start him again. We'll just sort of piece together that back. You know, that's a flex spot that's getting added. Now I've got in a couple of spots, I've got him with Barkley. Like it's not even a decision process about who I'm playing right now. It's, it's Madison. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you this past week, uh, I did so much hand wringing about AJ Dillon. Uh, as just an example. And some of these running back situations will go to the wire in terms of what information are we going to get by the weekend? What information by 1 p.m.? If it's a, a late kick, that provides further ambiguity. And so you just collect the information as you as you can and make the best decision you can. We we did have some tea leaves that A.J. Dillon was going to be, you know, probably used more than a typical a month ago, both healthy environment there. And it, guess what? It played out that way. Jones got the start, and yet it was a heavy dose of Dillon over the last three quarters of that game. I wanted to ask you, because we were bat batting back and forth on topics for this week, and you, like, literally one of the first names you brought up was Chuba Hubbard. And I, it, this is going to be interesting to say, and dare I say, feathers might come up into the air here. I'm a little more bearish on what's going to happen here in Carolina. Because uh, you've kind of mentioned he could be a league winning player. And I think the could be part, you know, is probably the part that you would focus on because obviously range of outcomes here. But that's a wide net. Well, just I, the, the first, you know, week seven, it was no Christian McCaffrey, but it was also no Amir Abdullah. And then Amir Abdullah comes in, he starts poking around in here taking his uh, his PPR and passing game role in here. And he, I really do think he provides a limitation to Chuba Hubbard in the passing game. And I have this bad feeling that we're going to get some of these games for Hubbard with like 15 touches, but one catch. And if he doesn't score a touchdown, then it's like eight points, 10 points, something like that, even though he looks good. Mm -hmm. And I just negative game script. Can you really be sure that Carolina is not going to have just droves of negative game script? With what they got working at quarterback, it doesn't seem like they're on a good path. And fortunately, week 14 out of the bye, they get Atlanta. So that might be their best chance to have a positive game script and a big, heavy Chuba Hubbard game. But you look at routes, you look at the, the snap share, and Amir Abdullah is more of a hindrance than if it was Royce Freeman. Because of the niche he is in, and I just think for Abdullah to be on the field, it's going to be more of a pass-centric, hurry-up, two-minute drill type stuff. I just, that worries me a little bit. Can you call me? Can you call my nerves a little bit? Um, I'll calm you a little bit. I mean, listen, I think I think you're going to get a good matchup in Week 14, and then we'll see from there, right? I mean, we don't have to we don't have to know that right now, and I think you feel okay doing it now. Um, you know, as, as week 14 comes around, I think you'll feel okay, probably giving him a, a shot in the flex. Um, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm surprised that you're concerned about the, the second coming of Johnny Unitas, which we were pitched on <laughs> as being uh, Cam Newton's return to Carolina. Um, I oh, So not working out five for 21? I don't, I mean, listen, I, I don't, uh, he was off I mean, to such a non regression worthy start with his <laughs> touchdown rate and early on in his new Carolina revival. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I see, I, I see what you're saying. I, can say I just this, say, Cam, Cam Newton, how dicey of a start is he, though? You can't be confident he finishes any game now, right? No, you can't. Um, can, I, I will give you a little, I'll, I'll pitch you on Chuba Hubbard. Um, so weeks, uh, just like four, bizarro world. I was drafting yeah. Chuba Hubbard everywhere in rookie drafts. And now I'm like, I'm on the fence. I don't know about this guy. <laughs> right. Right. It's totally. Uh, I don't trust from weeks, well, that's fair. From weeks four through eight, uh, he was a leading snap getter. He, his percentages during that time, 47, 65, 65, 53, 55. Um, Amir Abdullah in the one week that they played together with, uh, with, with McCaffrey out. It was a 55 30 split. Uh, and that was with Freeman taking 15%. So still, I, I do think he's going to be the, the lion share touch guy. Um, I understand a little bit where your concerns are, but you can, um, you can agree though, that this is not the, the absolute Alexander Madison effect though. Like the number two running back in this case is probably getting more usage than the Co James Connor in Pittsburgh and Madison and some of these most optimal settings. This is not that. This is like the next tier down of he's pro at most he's looking at probably 60, 65 percent. That's probably still, fair. still good, still, still good. good, but it yeah. does bring in it, it takes the top off of that 
mid to high running back one sort of projection and confidence level that we would have going into the week. Like you said, he's probably going to be in practice, a running back two type that the stronger teams are going to flex as they're running back three slash four. If I were to put that in like playoff team terms, I would imagine. I think that's, I think that's fair. And again, okay. but you're at that point, you're sort of looking in a, I mean, this is a, this is a poor man's problem to have, right? I mean, this is a, Right. And, uh, you know, and, and I did look their their routes that that week, uh, 11 to nine. So Abdullah had 11, Chuba Hubbard had nine. So that passing game work was was split. And um, yeah, so I mean, I, I still think that there's some some ceiling on him that he can post running back one type production during that stretch. We do have in the chat uh, Dontrell Hilliard or Chuba Hubbard. Uh, I'm not going down that road, Harmon. <laughs> I am not going down that road. I, I actually think for if we look at the next month in aggregate, I think Deonta Foreman's the the actual answer there in Tennessee. Yes. I don't think if Hilliard holds up to 15 plus touches a week, I would be very surprised as a career minimally used change of pace guy. Like well, he's going to need. Yeah. So, so, so I think Foreman is actually looking pretty good. I think their intention is to use him as the lead back, especially you see the usage from this past week. I know Hilliard had a couple of long runs and that kind of masked some things, but I think, I think Foreman, when you consider the long road back he's had from Achilles, um, he has a ton of talent. So if he can get anywhere back to 75, 80% of that, of his peak level years ago in Houston, then uh, you could be cooking with something. I don't think Hilliard's going to be the answer. So the answer is Chuba Hubbard there. Pure 50-50 um, split in terms of their snap share this week. Um, but when you look at it, 19 carries for a buck 09 from Foreman, which almost by any other measure would be the, um, in any other circumstance, would be the headline from that game, but for that long broken run for Hilliard. Um, hey, by the way, th th should this change our our thought process on cam Akers. i mean right we've been looking for we've been sort of out in the out in the woods looking for recovery stories from torn achilles and you know this is a pretty good one right well, apparently I mean, he might play this year jordan <laughs> apparently <yeah. laughs> apparently it's possible that right. would blow my mind right. <laughs> if we right. saw him before the end of this football season playing for the rams yes yes yeah man uh, yeah. What do you think about other potential league winning players? I think Foreman's a good one. Um, you know, I think that um, I think Breed is interesting. I don't know if he gets all the way there, but I think he's interesting. Um, you know, Connor probably doesn't count. Um, Jamal Williams with DeAndre Swift banged up again. I don't know if he gets all the way there in terms of being league winning, but I think he could be difference maker down the stretch. Um you know, if Sony I think, Michelle, it, I think it's, diffi have, I think it's difficult if you go, if, if you're like, you see, you're going the super low cost route, like, yeah. if, like a guy that you literally could have picked up in the past month or something, right. or, you know, someone that is generally off the radar for lineups. I was thinking of the higher end of like, who could actually like be the running back one over a two, three, four week sample for I don't. Uh, oh yeah. Fournette was on my list. I mean, he's, been, <laughs> how about he's been top 15 in seven of the last eight games. Like I know he's uh -huh. been doing well, but when I actually uh -huh. looked that up, I was like, wow, he um, he's on a tear and he has that running back one overall finish. I mean, can can right I ask there, you a question? Can I, can I ask you a question? In, in Dynasty, Leonard Fournette or Delvin Cook? <laughs> um, well, obviously the optics on Delvin right now or not <laughs> not supporting the team um i think one thing working against fournette is we don't know how many suitors he like has he really built back his profile enough to say if tampa doesn't want him or he doesn't go back to tampa on the cheap to keep chasing rings more rings with brady and they don't bring the band back together how much like so we don't know like that window of you know, getting literally dropped by Jacksonville. So I don't know. He's still young and I get all that, but Dalvin Cook has a lot more allegiance mm -hmm. of security of future starts, non-health related than Fournette, in my opinion. Yeah. So I, I was looking at that and I, I, so he's has basically a $12 million cap hit next year. Um, they could save 2.7 of that, I doubt that that's what happens. But He's if you on look, the they can save they can save eight million in twenty twenty three. So I think that becomes much more of a thing. If you yeah. see the the interesting thing I think about about that the reason I use that specific example is 
if if Fournette signs something in the range of like a like a rich man's version of the um, Mike Davis contract, where basically there's this year guaranteed and some of it in 2023 is guaranteed. Um, and if it's with Tampa or if it's with a situation we like, like there actually might be more allegiance there than there is with Delvin Cook, which I think is curious. And and I'll be honest, a non something that is a non uh, zero factor in my calculus is the stuff that's going on with Everson Griffin. Because if you listen closely, um, you know, who was it that he said was the person behind giving him the gun or, you know, helping him get the gun it was Delvin cook. And so that has been some stuff that had popped up in his background. I, it just gives me a little bit of pause on top of some of the injury stuff and the lack of, and frankly, he's been producing like a, a replaceable running back two this year. So, all of those things, it just gives me there's there's pause there on the on the cook thing. And I think really he's been better than Fournette essentially one year of their dynasty career. And so um, we're treating him with a lot more security, I think, than Fournette, just because Fournette is a free agent in the offseason. But I think that that could starkly change. We might be sitting here in six months having a whole different conversation. Yep. But either way, I mean, we both would agree that Fournette, critical offseason. He's obviously yes. earning. I mean, you would think easily he's he's earned, uh, like you said, a, a year where it's like, okay, this year's a lock, next year's a possibility in terms of 22 and 23. So uh, that, would be, that would be what we think, but it may not be what the NFL thinks. He's obviously doing his absolute best in a contract year, and frankly, running backs are constantly in contract years uh, right. for, for new contracts. Uh, this is Chad Parsons, Jordan McNamara, Episode 80, the Football Guys Dynasty Show, and we are sponsored this week by Props Fantasy. Uh, they got the Tournament of Champions. It's a three-week playoff-style run uh, with the podcast experts in the business. Um, and also want to remind you that setting up your team, it's easy. You can sync it with existing teams from Sleeper, Yahoo. You create a challenge, and you can be the undisputed champion. You can play against your league mates from other leagues. You can play against folks from other leagues entirely. And again, registration gives you a chance to win a signed Aaron Rodgers helmet. And the more challenges you enter, the more chances you have to win. And use Football Guys as your promo, propsfantasy.com slash guys. Um, I was going to mention, you mentioned before that, um, I was going to mention an easy one that I've been talking about for probably two months, which is Javante Williams. Um, this is a huge, and just imagine if they have a quarterback, but they don't. Um, but man, Javante Williams and... Uh, Melvin Gordon, it almost feels like a college offense where, I mean, there's two guys and they're both just having startable numbers. And if one of them were to go out, I mean, wheels up. I mean, the other one can be a high. And by high, I mean, even one uh, running back with the, with how they're they're running this offense and with how good both of them respectively at their their stages of their career have looked. And Gordon got a little dinged up in week 12. He's not going to miss time, but any little bit helps. And the same applies again for Melvin Gordon. It could, it could apply uh -huh. the same way. Obviously Javante Williams would be the one where you mention it all the time. Like the, is it round two or day two? Like generally you start to see this second half of the season. A lot of them get opportunities. It could be by way of injury. They could just take the job and run with it. Williams has looked good enough that you could make arguments in either direction, but high market share would be in store for either one. And frankly, it's been 60, 40 or tighter every single week. Yeah, it's basically it's essentially a 50-50 split in terms of, you know, in terms of passing game usage as well. Like it's it's essentially right down the middle, which is um which is unique. You know, they're very I thought the curious thing about this is that they they mirror each other. They're not really complements, they're kind of mirror images of each other. Spider-Man <laughs> meets Spider-Man. Right. Just pointing at each other. <laughs> you know, you yeah. know one thing I wrote down on here and and this is this is the lowest hanging fruit, but Christian McCaffrey out Sequan Barkley still trying to find his footing. I mean, the answer actually could be as simple as if you have Jonathan Taylor, you're going to win. <laughs> like, let's be fair, right? I mean, that could be the simplest of simpleton answers for this year. He is carrying teams. He's carrying the Colts. <laughs> um, and he could also carry, carry the dynasty teams where he's been top 10 each of the last nine games. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a historic run that we don't necessarily see this every year from a running back. And he's doing it at 22 years old. He's doing it after a running back one season as a rookie. Talk about building a profile just instantly of a guy that should you ever have really questioned him coming out of Wisconsin. And yet some people did. And I mean, we saw in Superflex, right? I mean, he, he, he fell down sometimes to beyond the top three or four, depending on your, your league format. And 
in year two, here he is just lapping the position by and large. Yeah, yeah. One other name we should probably discuss is Cordero Patterson. So he comes back from the injury. Um, by the way, it's crazy. It was crazy to me. The whole the whole him going out with what everyone thought was a high ankle, uh, including our Dr. Gene. Maybe IR and he's going to be out now. He was limited practicing that week. <laughs> like Monday of that right. week because they were on this short week. Like he's back. It's like, what is going on with him? And, when I started you know, watching, it was, a, you know, and, and I don't know about you. Any place I started him, I didn't feel super comfortable because, you know, and he even had an mm-hmm. early tackle in that game mm-hmm. where he kind of limped off. And then he was out like a couple plays and he comes back and he's just like, no, he's fine. The rest of the game, he puts yeah. up like 20 something or whatever it was. And it's just like, but that would be like, that's a huge scare. And yeah. I, I was in some spots where, to be fair, even dis- despite the news we heard or the pause you might have, I had to go with guys like Patterson or I had mm-hmm. to go with AJ Dillon. And it all worked out in the wash, you know, in terms of maybe what the pivots were. I think Tyler Lockett was one of a pivot that I had in the bag. Or I remember one, it was AJ Dillon and I pivoted to Antonio Gibson because it's like, well, Gibson's going to start. He's going mm-hmm. to project to see his full workload. He ended up scoring, I think, similarly to Dillon. But mm-hmm. these are the machinations that we go through because based on what your pivots are. You may not have any holding out for the Monday night player. I, I, and, and just to be transparent, I... I don't remember being this in depth with it five, 10 years ago of like, okay, let's make sure I have a pivot on my roster. If I want to hold out for the Monday night player and being that sensitive to making sure I optimize it to that degree of like, Oh, he'll play. Right. I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's some of the COVID designation stuff of like the final testing and you never quite know. And I mean, I think maybe you or somebody else has mentioned before, sometimes you just take the, take the player like if if you know they're playing you have all the information on thursday and that's your pivot from sunday or monday and there's some pause just play the thursday guy just based the points you you at least know right Right. i mean you know it might be a slight tick down from the optimal of the best case scenario future cast but yeah i mean just maybe that's the era we're in right now and maybe that'll change in future years but it does feel like like you said take the points yeah and i that's absolutely a and like this has been I'm I'm totally with you. The five to ten years ago, I mean, this wasn't really cons- much of a consideration for me. Three pre-COVID, if we're talking 2019, Monday night having having pivots for the Sunday night game. Yeah, right. Yeah, I didn't I didn't really much think of it, and then then you have to start thinking about it, and all of a sudden, like you totally will be like, wow, I have to really guard against this in in other contexts because, I mean, that was Depend a lot. To we zero. Get, right. We we would get Thursday night games and was like, well, I listen, I think this guy's like a running back three, and maybe I could play this running back two, but there's a COVID issue. I'm like, I'm I'm cramming the running back three in, even though he's on Thursday night, and even though it's less points at a max but listen i take the points and move on right that that stuff has absolutely entered my conscious in a way that i didn't i didn't think the other thing too is i think it even an even deeper version of that is you have to guard against actually locking up your roster so if you have a thursday night uh you know if you have a guy on thursday night that that is uh going to be on your bench that might be a cut for you you have to decide before that game kicks if you want to cut him Right. And so one of the tactics that I've used, because I've, I've had this problem um, and this was absolutely a COVID problem. And then, you know, you have to sort of figure out ways around it. Then you're cutting guys you might not necessarily want to cut, um, but but cut them first and then backfill it with someone you know on playing Sunday. Right. So, um, you know, I had a situation where I think I cut I cut someone that was playing on Thanksgiving. And uh, and then added like Tajay Sharp or somebody that was playing on Sunday. And then I just said, you know, I can recycle. And then I caught Tajay Sharp on Sunday. And, you know, at least I had the roster spot. That was if Cordero Patterson wasn't going to play, I had a spot, you know. So That's those sorts of things you have to up. really prepare. That's funny you bring that up because I had that exact situation. I had four or five leagues where I picked up uh, Godwin Iguo. Yes, I think that's what it was. And and, and, and it, Thursday, you know, it's like you're you're being pulled in three or four different directions. You're not really thinking of it in this like you normally would in a given week. But I got to Saturday, Sunday. I didn't have the flexibility mm-hmm. because he was already locked. He would have been my cut because uh, Williams and Swift were both active. Right. But we didn't know that, I think, on Tuesday or whenever – you know, you're picking up spec waiver stuff, but, but yeah, like how long can you prolong that flexibility of your roster? Uh, you know, and making sure like leading up to Thursday kickoff, you're like, okay, do I really want this guy? <laughs> you know, is he in my lineup or is he a, a, a an auto hold? Cause if he's not, 
like you said, recycle to someone that at least extends the clock. It's like you get a whole new play clock uh, for, you know, to be able to call audibles. <laughs> um, more Omahas. We're all about fans and fans of more Omahas. Uh, I, wrote, I wrote down Tony Pollard question mark. I just read today that Jerry Jones says full workload for Ezekiel Elliott. How do we not know he was going to get involved? <laughs> but no, I actually thought to start this week, boy, it's going to be interesting for lineup decisions, lineup questions for Pollard and for Zeke if this is going to be a load management NBA sort of thing. But it sounds like it may be a bunch of nothing in terms of Zeke is maybe getting a touch less work, but is it enough to put Pollard into the lineup? Is it enough to pull Zeke out? I guess would be the big questions. I mean, he was a full participant like in practice. Already. Exactly. <laughs> and not yeah. like we're waiting. Yeah. I mean, it's much about nothing. It sounds like at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we might look back at this whole Pollard thing in a couple of years and be like, what might have been? But this is going to be, Zeke has the feel of like a mid-career Frank Gore, where it was like everyone was betting on his backup. And then like the the, the quickest way to like fantasy irrelevance is be the Zeke, yeah. the Zeke backup, you know, Zeke's, Zeke's heir apparent because he's just Mar- going to no, keep the, no, the Mar- Lynch back. He's the new right. Robert Turbin. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Pollard is the new Robert Christine Turbin. Michael. Christian Michael. Exactly. Christian Michael that understands the playbook. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, except he actually plays. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think Frank Gore is a good one. I mean, Zeke does not get hurt. Right. He is a warrior. He is a bulldog. And you see him lump off and you see him come back in and you see him get a mm-hmm. touchdown on that same drive. And mm-hmm. I was actually going to look. We've had zero clarified starts, correct me if, you know, if I'm wrong, about Pollard, right? Zero clarified I'm going to go and look at my start rate thing right here because I swear we're at zero. And that's not meant Mm -hmm. to be he has zero productive games. It means he has zero games with no Zeke in the lineup. I believe that's correct. Yeah, well, I don't don't think Zeke has missed time, has he? (laughs) Um, I guess we could just add up. I guess that's that's also the easier way to do it. Just be like, has he not played? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I don't remember remember one. (laughs) I I don't remember one from Pollard being a clarified start. And that's my, and that's, well, and the start rate would prove that because I mean, you've, he would be up in the at least 60% range if, if Zeke were out in a week, at least. So his highest start in his career is 42%. It mm-hmm. came week six of the season. And this season, he's actually been up in the 20s and 30s consistently. I mean, some people are flexing him. That's mm-hmm. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, yeah. So Zeke missed. Zeke missed, missed uh, week. Yeah. Zeke Zeke missed uh, week fifteen last year. So that would have been um, against San Fran. And oh, okay. let's see here. So let's That's see. He, uh, okay. Pollard. Pollard went twelve for sixty-two on the ground for two t- and two touchdowns. He went six uh, receptions, hmm. sixty-three yards. So. Uh, a robust fantasy performance yeah, was at 30 looks like close to 30 points okay. so um so yes yeah, so that okay. would be his basically one clarified start in his career so okay so he has one one so mm-hmm. far and the guy is worth what he's been worth at times a first round pick or in some marketplaces seems like he's worth pick. it right I mean, now yeah yeah um yeah. Another one I wrote down, and this is, you know, Gene Bramel projects week 14 plus for Chase Edmonds, but high ankle, James Conner, we don't know. Like you said, we're taking it week by week. So James Conner could be that guy that we're starting now. And you know what? Maybe we continue to start him. Because when yeah. Gene puts the plus, plus means possible. That's what that means. So we'll see. Yeah. And high ankles, I mean, not everyone's a part Terminator 2 like Cordero Patterson. Or it's just like, oh, yeah, I'm practicing. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I also okay. wrote down uh, a non-running back, actually, Antonio Brown. You know, if he ever gets mm. back, if he's back by the playoffs, get he's played five games this year, three top 12 finishes. So those are pretty good odds. For a guy that mm-hmm. you don't have right now, depending on your situation, he might be an auto start when you get him back. Mm-hmm. And again, we'll see. 15, 16, I don't know. But if he's back... Obviously, the first start might be a little testy, but if you get 14, maybe, and then you get a 15 clarified. Yeah. What do, so, what do you think about Taysom Hill as a potential guy at quarterback that could really make a difference on the switch? Tim Tebow asked down the stretch. Yeah, 
Exactly. I mean, a guy that can that can run around now. Quarter. I mean, probably more towards super flex because it's almost like Shawshank if you've come this far. <laughs> Maybe you know. I mean, you've you probably have a, a a nice quarterback situation. Like, I can't imagine many playoff teams are going to be rocking. Like, well, I got Dalton this week. I don't know what I'm doing next week. Maybe I'll pick up Taysom Hill. Um, so I think is he really going to surpass your confidence level in the 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 go to guys would be I guess the positional value in one quarterback but super flex absolutely could be one of those hammer throws where you're like checks watch yeah I'm starting Big Ben right now or uh, Baker Mayfield <laughs> Russell Wilson or Taysom <laughs> wow just pick that scab Jordan just pick that Russell Wilson scab how you feeling over there Chad you all right <laughs> dynasty buy keyword dynasty maybe not redraft buy guy yeah. can't throw yeah. is that an issue at quarterback just a little <laughs> Just a touch. Uh, do you have any other uh, league-winning player candidates? Does the 19 hours of, of therapy that he's doing on his finger include the time that he's actually on the field trying to throw balls down? <laughs> because I remember there was like a joke. When, there was like a joke when I was a kid. If you're watching on video, I mean, they're like, yeah, they're doing exercises. <laughs> I don't really know what this is, but we're getting ready for something. <laughs> it's the Russell Wilson rehab. Yeah. I um, also wrote uh, Alvin Kamara down because, again, an out-of-sight, out-of-mind guy. Mm-hmm. He's probably going to be back this week so that's mm-hmm. a shot in the arm for you as well that's and of one. course i had to give a shout out to your boy austin eckler who has just been a monster he's running back two on the season he's got three top three finishes that's pretty good it's a good player. pretty good i think it's hard to call that non not high impact yes um are right, you ready for a few trades here let's do it all right uh we're gonna do the monthly is this enough for patrick mahomes <laughs> gonna leave now <laughs> Get ready. You're leaning. You're leaning. No, already. All right. That's I, my already prior. Part, Here we go. I already know the part you're going to pick apart, and I'm actually going to leave it out of the trade just to see what you picked before I said. So Trevor Lawrence, uh, Carson Wentz, Javante Williams, and Melvin Gordon for Patrick Mahomes. So Lawrence, Wentz, Melvin Gordon, and Javante Williams. Yep. I'm smashing Mahomes. All right. Well, can you believe the actual deal included a first on Mahomes' side? <laughs> See why I left it out? I wanted to see what you said first. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm at assuming it's, it's not... super flex, right? I mean, that's it, that, I think it that goes. At without. least it's not. <laughs> right. Actually, no, let's shift it to one quarterback. See if we can get Jordan <laughs> off of his Mahomes high horse. Fine. I'll take Javante Williams, I guess. I don't know. Fine. Okay. <laughs> All I right. can stream yeah. Carson once this in is, a way that uh, won't kill me. This is how quickly uh, the team direction can change the player targets. We've got a rebuilding team getting Dalvin Cook. And James Robinson. And then we've got the contending team getting Michael Pittman and T. Higgins. Wow. So two healthy guys for a non-healthy guy. And the rebuilding team is taking on Robinson, though, which, again, might have more question marks than this year. That's interesting. I I typically wouldn't add the receiver position that way if I was trying to make a difference when now. Right? Like, for me... Like I decided to, you know, I went and made a dynasty trade and I gave up future assets for Devontae Adams, right? Like that's, if I'm going to make a splash at receiver, I'm, I want to press chips in for elite assets because those are the guys that do it. Um, so then projectively, so I don't know. I, I, and I don't like, I like Pittman. I like Higgins, but I don't know if this would be the ends with which I would, I would, I would go for this particular out. I wouldn't, that's not how I would try and achieve this outcome. I don't think so. Um, so I think I'd probably take the cook side. Um, and I don't feel super great about either side, but I think I'd take the cook and Robinson side at this point. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think I would think with Dalvin cook, you could get a different core wide receiver than those Mm -hmm. guys. Not, I don't detest those guys or anything, but I just have some pause with them that I would rather other types, if that makes sense. Um, Higgins did have a good game. Uh, Pittman's currently the wide receiver one. I would say Pittman doesn't really have competition of any accord. Mm-hmm. And T. Higgins is going to have Jamar Chase till eternity. Right. And that is, could be a limiting element. They could both be top 12. I mean, we've seen passing games slant that way. And Cincinnati could for multiple seasons turn into, you know, it was those uh, Des Bryant, Miles Austin years. I remember in Dallas, you got Julio and Roddy White, I remember as well. So uh, 
did Calvin really get into the top 12 when Julio was still? Did they have Pretty one close. year overlap like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it, it does happen. Um, it's not super common, uh, but that is a situation with not a hyper strong, not to offend CJ Ozama, friend of the show, um, but the, not a super strong tight end presence. And Tyler Boyd has been drifting into a uh, wide receiver three lost land <laughs> mm-hmm. since uh, those two guys have been going. All right, we got one more here. Christian McCaffrey deal, a contending team gave, and they already know draft position apparently, contending team gave 107, 112, and Zach Moss for Christian McCaffrey. Contending team gave 107. Picks, gave picks for McCaffrey, yeah. 107. Well, you're not helping you contend. Correct. I'm just curious. Um, it was 107 and 110, you said? 112, I'm sorry. If I, missed, if I said 10, yeah. Is that start one or super flex? Uh, one quarterback, I believe. Give me McCaffrey. Yeah. Still worth two first. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we're going to have to do a, a period of time. <laughs> I mean, we're going to have to go through in the off season uh, because running backs like four through 25 have a, a massive amount of questions and concerns, I think in terms of rankings. But um, when you look at that, I mean, I think you have to break in favor of like, if you just sort of boil his resume down, like, Hey, he's got two running back one finishes on his resume and he's going to be like 25 or 26. 26. Yeah, 26. I mean, and he's a declining he, asset, right? I mean, he's, he, he's yeah. going down. He, he's not going to go back up, but when you're making a subset of players that you can say can lead the position and can literally do it by five points per game at their best, he is on one hand of players like that. So, can we do I it? Mean, Can we do who who's on the list? It's Taylor, right? Uh, well, McCaffrey. Mahomes, right? Oh, oh, oh. You're, oh, you're thinking? I, I overall. no, I meant, I meant all positions. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, okay. If we're doing five, uh, wide receiver is really tough to lap lap the position like that. Did Devonte Adams do that last year? He might have. He might have. I'll check it. I he think. He, I think he would be. I think the one that could. I look at more a warp stuff, so it kind of warps in my brain. No pun intended. But, um, hey, oh. Um, is, is Kelsey still on that frame? Yes, but I wouldn't necessarily trust it for that much longer. No, I'm just saying, is he, yeah. is he on that list? I mean, if the answer if is you yes, said then. for the rest of the year, yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Yeah. So Adams by 22, sorry, by 32 points, he outpaced Tyreek Hill in one last game last year. So yeah, I mean, that's what so, yeah. three about three points per game through four points per game. But do you still think you can? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're about five, five ish. Or mm-hmm. So John Taylor would be one based on what we've seen this year. Um, but McCaffrey, would you say second one Barkley still has that? He's got a, I didn't Chad, say Chad, I didn't, the last time he broke, you have to sign high numbers in, for this. The last time he he broke sixty yards was in December of twenty nineteen. It's okay. December of twenty twenty one. Okay, I just have I have concerns. I just asked. I mean, we're making the list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's just staring at me. He's like, "Stop mentioning Sekou Barkley ever, ever. We're done. No. We're done here. We're absolutely done." All right, um, let's get to uh, some quotes from the, the Dynasty Forum this week. Uh, I do remind you to sign up for that free email it's update. Pain. Over football it's pain. Guys. <laughs> it's to the, the right uh, top of the homepage. And again, the news comes out 10, 11, 12 o'clock every night from Joe Bryant, delivered, uh, distilled. It has all the comments. And you get the alerts, too, for injuries, changing situations. I would say the Thursday through Sunday uh, is absolutely the most vital weeks. And again, your league mates have it. You should to make sure you're at least on level playing field with receiving the information from footballguys.com. Uh, we got a few quotes and they're actually, I, I put a theme together for, for Patriots running backs here. So Romandre Stevenson really has passed the eye test whenever he's been on the field. I'm willing to take the risk to see if he can uh, end up sitting in the feature back role under Belichick. And this is a trade that, just to outline it, these comments were based around a trade where someone gave a first for Romandre Stevenson. In essence, that was the deal. Uh, I mean, 
we are Ramondre Stevenson fans. So, I mean, we were there before being Ramondre Stevenson fans were, was cool. Uh, back to March and April, at least I was. I can't speak for you. I think you were too. But um, you know, team big running back, guys that can move and catch. Um, uh, Damian Harris is good. And we, we don't have a proof of concept on this. Like, when's the last time they had a bell cow back? I mean, I was watching some clips from Brady uh, and the and the promo in that show, his new show, and I think the last one was like Corey Dillon, maybe. I mean, maybe if we want to call Legarrette Blunt that, um, but really multi-year bell cow guys. I mean, it has been a long time. I mean, you could maybe call Stephen Ridley that, but was he truly that? You know, the head Vereen, right? I mean, you go back. It, it's yeah, that was a much more murky. Yeah, exactly. It's they have their roles. They have right. three guys with their role. Like, like you're not going to be surprised any week if none of them get to forty percent snaps. Right. I and mean, they still that's might have a lower, top five running game. Like that's they've, lower they've than some of these teams' running you. backs too. Yes. Some of these backfields, literally the number two guy, and we saw that in Denver. The number two guy is getting for higher percentage than any Patriot guy. I mean, you have to yeah. you have to take that super seriously. Like trading a first for that, I'll just say trading a first. They say uh, Antoine Smith before Dylan. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> for Derek, thanks for Derek. Thanks for Derek from the chat. That, but it's yeah. um. I mean, we're talking about giving a first round pick for a day three running back. We are, we talk about not making that pick in your rookie draft. You do so a, now based you on always do that trade, right? Yeah. yeah. So you well don't make the pick. So right. if you don't right. want to pick someone else, trade down, trade out, do trade for another player, do something else than doing the what is it the Devante Booker two thousand and what year was that sixteen? Uh, I think it was I think that was the Zeke class. But uh but that was the year it fell off a cliff at running back. By the late first you were down to midday three. That was uh who was the guy anyway, uh but there was another one uh, in addition to Devontae Booker and they both went Booker pretty was high. yeah Booker was sixteen. We went to the yeah. senior bowl together in seventeen. It was so it was the year before that was sixteen. Yeah. There was another yeah. one too that went it was year. Booker and uh oh was or it somebody else? It wasn't De- De- DeAndre Washington, but it was someone like that. It was like a midday three decent landing spot or whatever. Anyway, the point Samaj is P. Ryan. Samaj P. Ryan. Okay. So you wouldn't do that in uh you wouldn't do that in your rookie draft, and now you're gonna do it part way through the rookie season when again, at worst Oh, sorry. At best for Stevenson right now, it's a committee where you say you need Harris out of the way. And then for Harris, you need Stevenson out of the way. I feel like they both are siphoning each other. I wouldn't give a first. Uh, I think this is dicey. Like you said, I mean, proof of concept. I mean, how many times have we been hit over the head for a long duration with don't trust what the Patriots are doing for very long? It's hot hand approach. It's hot weak approach, whatever. So be careful. Uh, and then this other person said, uh, I won't go asking uh, for New England Patriots running back opposite of heaven if I can avoid it. So <laughs> that 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 distills this down, which is I mean, we had we had some pause with Damian Harris, which is like, uh-huh. how long do we trust this? And uh-huh. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I think Stevenson looks better. I think he offers more variety to his game and his skill set. But that doesn't mean much of anything. So Stevenson, what two months ago was in the doghouse and couldn't like he was a healthy scratch, right? So who's not to say that JJ like, Taylor gets like twenty two carries this week? Like you know, yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't we shock forgot at to all. we left JJ Taylor off the league winners list? Like we did. <laughs> that was an omission on our part early in the show. Right. Stevenson looks like he's going to be a good one, but if I can cash out on a Patriots running back for a first, I am doing it every time. Uh, that's a that's a like the most positive good. EV thing you could have done over the past like two decades. It was just like yep. all right, anytime I get a, ch- a chance for a fir- sell sell Patriots running back for a first, do it. Yes. How con- how confident was Harris worth a first though for moments? It wasn't. It didn't feel like there were these big swaths of time that Harris was easily exitable, if that's a word, for a first. Not a ton. No, no. Um, and I, I mean, I think the markets kind of on this right like this isn't a right this isn't a new um you know phenomenon so i think this is kind of baked into their price yeah and, and th- we used to have the, the mantra of just take the cheapest guy right 
Mm-hmm. If you have ambiguity and uncertainty and lack of confidence, take the cheapest guy, Jonas Derek, Gray. Derek's on fire in our. What are you trying to? What are you trying to hurt? What are you trying to hurt me? <laughs> yeah, let's also remember the next day when he when he misses a meeting and he gets cut or You're something. Cut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Congrats, Jonas, on your four touchdowns. touchdowns. Turn that. in your key card. <laughs> <laughs> You missed home act today. <laughs> Turn in your key card. See you later. Yeah. Get on your bicycle and drive away. Yeah. Bye bye. He made forty three thousand dollars <laughs> for his game day check for that for that one glorious what like hundred ninety yard four touchdown game. That it's was it. Miami, right? See you later. Yeah. yeah, man. That that would be fun. Jonas Gray. How many how many stops and for how many? weeks was he or how many months was he in the nfl beyond that point <laughs> not long the answer was yeah. not long yeah magical game yeah. Um, all right do you do you have any quotes that you'd like to contribute in terms of your own would you like to create a quotable and, and finish this out in terms of thoughts going into the playoff stretch here oh ooh. um so i i have um i have a a theory that i'm working on um i think the back end of your roster uh so primarily non-starter guys i think they have to have one of two purposes either they can help you this year or they are in some way shape or form long-term dynasty assets whether that's potential trade candidates in the offseason or long term you think that they've got starter in the range of outcomes otherwise they're of no use to you question from the back uh wouldn't Chat. that be the obvious usage for any any dynasty player on your roster you and you'll say to you would think you and I, yes. You would think yes. Right. But but I do think in terms of like really clarifying what you're doing, I mean, literally sit down and take an exercise and go down again. If it's if it's players, you know, 10 through 20, maybe you don't need to do it through all of them. But if you if you have guys in that range, you're like, hey, what am I doing here? Um, but but really at the the last five to ten guys on the back of your roster, really think about what they're doing, right? If and if they're not accomplishing anything, you know start investing in something that will, whether that's a backup quarterback spot. I mean, whether that's, um, you know, whether it's a backup running back spot and maybe they're all taken now, maybe you got to go get a, a third guy, right? Or if it's a tight end premium, maybe you're taking um, a backup on a tight end or someone that's in a committee, something like that you think can, can, can potentially break out, but really think about those things. And, and I mean, literally, I think at this point you have to say, can this person make a, make a, a, a be of consequence at any point where I'm going to, feel like I'm going to start them. If the answer is no, get someone that will, right? And especially if it's season long, if it's if it's um, in your dynasty league, right? I think we hold on to those guys too long for for purposes that, um, you know, that, that aren't particularly apparent. And I think that's a mistake. And be pretty stringent about the profiles, uh, the company you're going to keep for those players where you say they're not for now, they're for later. So, uh, you know, what is that criteria and be pretty firm about that by position on what that means to you, because yeah, you're going to lock, you're going to lock that roster spot in maybe all the way until rookie draft time. Sometimes there's no waivers all the way until that point you draft your rookie draft and then you start having some waivers and locking in that dead roster spot. You know, if, if you had a a poor process going into that, that spot, again, we want to take advantage of every single spot we can for as long as we can. You know, and that's that's why it's always important, as we say. I mean, this sounds simple then to be 12, 13 weeks into the season and be talking about, hey, make sure if someone gets a COVID designation or an IR designation, you see that's why you have alerts on for your, your email uh, notifications because, hey, you might not have Christian McCaffrey in that league, but you may have him in another league and up, oh, he's IR eligible. Boom, save the spot, add somebody, optimize your roster, rinse, repeat, do that as many times as necessary this week, this season. All right, so we were busy. We talked a little bit about the Patriots' backfield. We talked, of course, about rebuilding versus contending trades to make. Uh, also talked hey, about I, some league-winning players, I, and we I, also talked about whatever Jordan's going to say now. Yeah, I just want to—I want to plug. We got the shop, so shop at uh, dot footballguys.com. Go check it out. There's a sorry Joe T-shirt, which I've been Swag. pushing for and lobbying for the people. So Yo, go ahead and get. Cecil that. has to um, wear that every show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've got mine in queue, so you'll see it here in a couple of weeks, and then. Excellent. Um, um so check out that and then i think you and i were both on dynasty player movement this week which i know I uh yes i think that was your your week as well so yeah we, we i think we've out. paired up almost everyone that we've been yes. on this season but yeah uh what's that link one more time for folks uh shop.footballguys.com 
Too easy. Yep. We, they got tons of swag. You can actually get a swag bag for Christmas. Uh, all kinds of stuff from apparel to uh, some other items, maybe for your office or for your house. So they had a lot of fun putting that together. And I'm sure there will be more items in the future. But uh, pretty nice holiday. Holiday uh, stocking stuffer or otherwise for your your league mates that maybe if they already know about football guys, I guess the secret's out and uh, you can't hide it from them any longer in that, uh, that home league or that family league going on there all right uh, i am chad parsons he is jordan mcnamara and until next time good luck in your dynasty leagues and one. Oh, that was back iron one more for the win oh, i was off i was off <laughs>